Hi guys! Welcome to church for Home of Christ Kids. I'm Miss Stacy, and I am really glad that you guys are all here today. You know why? Because we are about to dig up some major fun. And that's why I am dressed and I am ready for the search. Because this month is all about digging deep to discover what matters most. In other words, we're going to be searching for wisdom. Yep, that's right. And in our search for godly wisdom, we will be visiting exciting locations all over the world. And we'll also be exploring the field of treasure hunters and archeologists. And actually, today, we are lucky enough to be able to hear from a pretty famous archeologist who's going to be helping us each week to look for ways that we can grow in our wisdom. Now, maybe you've heard of Indiana Jones, probably the most famous treasure hunter archeologist in the whole world. Well, we don't have him, but instead of Indiana Jones, we have California Carlson a world-renowned explorer who specializes in biblical history. And he's actually going to be joining us live from an archeological dig in process located in the Middle East. So let's go live now to California Carlson. Oh, hello there, Stacy. I can read you loud and clear. Thank you so much for being with us today, California. Hey, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? Of course. I'm currently excavating some artifacts, probably from King David's tomb. Actually, I'm almost finished with this one right here. It's a remarkable find. Such vivid color, perhaps a crown covered with jewels, maybe a piece of pottery decorated with hieroglyphics. I almost have it uncovered. Hang on, I gotta be gentle. Let's take a look together. And it is a garden gnome. Uh, I would put the date on this about 2017. Okay, so not everything is a treasure, but I'm gonna keep at it because maybe next time I will find something that is truly valuable. Well, that was still pretty exciting, getting to see archeology span happening live. Pretty, pretty cool. Well, California, before we let you go, can you tell the boys and girls at home what our Bible lesson is about today? Yes, yes. Today's lesson is about Jesus as a boy with the teachers at the temple. And as young Jesus grows in wisdom, it helps us know that wisdom is worth searching for. Now that's a treasure. Indeed it is. Well, thank you, California Carlson, for helping us out today. And we will surely see you again next week and we'll join you wherever in the world you may be. Sounds good. So until next week, remember that we love you and God is good all the time. Bro.
priceless treasure God knows me, God hears me, God is my comfort I am His and there's nothing better Forgiven and chosen forever I am a treasure
know what to do, you help me figure it out I run to you When I need a solution, I have no doubt That I will run to you When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out God, I run to you When I need a solution, I have no doubt Adventures, it's me, Haley, or as I am known in treasure hunting circles, Arizona Haley. Or just Haley is fine. That's also fine. Um, today we're hunting for treasure, not just any treasure, mind you, the treasure of wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Now, you may be thinking, wisdom doesn't sound like much of a treasure, but treasure can come in all shapes and sizes. Like this piece of pottery. It doesn't look like much, but if you look closer, closer, closest, there. If I had to guess, I'd say this artifact is probably a few thousand years old. Phoenician, <clears throat> probably. These markings suggest that this pot could be of Carthaginian origin. Some archeologists had to travel a long way to find this fragment. Who can say how much this piece is worth? Hmm? I'm thinking, 14, 15, that. Seven dollars and 49 cents. Um, uh, it looks like our archeologist friend didn't have to travel so far after all. You see, you can find treasure anywhere. You can find it halfway across the world. Or you can find it at Frank's Pottery Emporium. Wisdom can be like that. For some wisdom, you may have to dig really deep or travel really far. But other times, like in today's story, wisdom is closer than you think. Ooh, I wonder what era this is from, hmm? Oh, oh this is just my coffee. Hmm, <laughs> oh, now that's what I call treasure. I'll see you soon when I am much more caffeinated. Bye. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter two, verses 41 through 52. When God sent his very own son, Jesus to earth, angels shouted the good news. Fear not, I bring you good news of great joy. Shepherds and wise men journeyed to visit Jesus. And later, Mary and Joseph hurried to Egypt with their young son to keep him safe from King Herod. But Jesus wasn't always a baby or a young child. We don't know much about his early years, but he had to learn to walk and talk just like every other child. Mama. He probably learned from Joseph how to hammer nails and smooth pieces of wood for tables and wheels. We do know one very important story from the time Jesus was a boy. One of Jesus' followers, Luke, wrote it down many years later. He begins, every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to the feast as usual. Lentils, water skins, extra sandal straps. Jesus, run and tell your father we're packed and ready to leave. 
Yes, mother. The trip from their home in Nazareth to Jerusalem took several days. Friends and family traveled together. Jesus likely spent the day with his cousins and friends, finding his parents at dinner time. I brought sticks for the fire. I'll start this stew. We should reach Jerusalem by noon tomorrow. We don't know what Jesus thought or felt when he saw the city of Jerusalem perched on the rocky hillside ahead. Years later, he would enter the city to the shouts of cheering crowds. But for now, Jesus was just a boy celebrating Passover with his family. You remember where your cousins live, right? We're staying with them again. I can find it. All week, families celebrated with relatives. Together, they enjoyed the Passover feast. You, O oh Lord our God, have given us festival days for joy in remembrance of the departure from Egypt. Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God. When the feast was over, Mary and Joseph packed and began their trip home along the crowded roads. At the end of the day, they stopped to set up camp. Jesus, can you start the cooking fire? Jesus? I thought I saw him with... No, that was before we left the city. Mary and Joseph searched through the nearby family, settling down for the evening. Have you seen Jesus? Not since he gave me the last potato pancake yesterday evening. No one's seen him. Since Jerusalem. We left him in the city. Frantic, Mary and Joseph hurried back to Jerusalem to search for their missing son. They immediately checked the home where they had been staying. Very sorry, but I haven't seen him. Mary and Joseph crisscrossed the entire city. He loved the honey cakes from that bakery. Excuse me, have you seen a 12-year-old boy about this tall? Dark brown robe, hair kind of thicked out over his ears. Yes, yes, like that. Sorry, haven't seen you. They may have checked the swimming hole or the stables, but Jesus was nowhere to be found. So Mary and Joseph paced the streets at wit's end. He's just never gone off like this. I don't think he's here. We've searched the whole city. Everywhere except... As Mary and Joseph turned the corner, high white walls rose ahead of them. The, the temple. temple! We'll check the courtyard. Just in case. The courtyard was filled with visitors still in the city for Passover. As they circled the open space, Mary froze. Joseph, there! Just ahead, they saw their son. Jesus was sitting with a group of teachers, listening and asking questions. Teacher, isn't it always right to be kind, even if it means giving money to a beggar on the Sabbath? The teachers nodded in agreement, in amazement, but Mary and Joseph rushed forward. Jesus! Son, why have you treated us like this? Grabbing her boy, Mary hugged Jesus so hard, she nearly squeezed the air out of him. Your father and I have been worried about you. We've been looking for you everywhere. Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? All I know is no more stunts like this, okay? Jesus returned to Nazareth with his parents, obeying everything they asked of him. As he grew, he grew wiser and stronger. He also became more and more pleasing to God and to others. You want to know why wisdom is such a treasure? Because we have so many choices to make in our lives. Wisdom can help us know what to do and when to do it, what to say and how to say it, where to go, who to hang out with, all the choices. Wisdom is a very valuable treasure. So where do we find wisdom? When Mary and Joseph were searching all over for Jesus, they found him in the temple asking questions and listening to wisdom from the teachers. So maybe we can search for wisdom from our church leaders. We can tell them how we're feeling and ask them questions when we're not sure of something. Or maybe we can search for wisdom from someone in our family. Your family probably knows you better than anyone, and they can help you make tough decisions in a way that no one else can. And there's another place that we can search for wisdom. Ta-da! The 
The Bible is full of God's wisdom. Maybe you have one that looks like this. Or maybe you can find a Bible app on someone's phone. And then you should take some time to read it. Or have someone read it to you. Some people spend their lives searching for wisdom in the Bible. That's because wisdom is worth searching for. That's the one thing to remember today. Wisdom is worth searching for. Travel the world if you can, or look in your own home. But keep searching for wisdom. Valuable treasure awaits! Like this, a Truscan urn shard. Ah! Hopefully that wasn't too valuable. Well, I will see you next time on our next adventure. <laughs> I really hope we have some Etruscan glue.